Good morning, and welcome on the fifth Sunday of Lent. A warm welcome to our parishioners and everyone visiting us this weekend. Just a few reminders. Please keep your mask on at all times, covering both your mouth and nose. Please return to your pew after communion and wait at the end of Mass for the ushers to dismiss each section. If you have a contribution to our parish, you may drop it in the wooden collection boxes near the baptismal font as you leave. A new Bible study on the letter of the Hebrews will be offered by Zoom on Tuesday evening, beginning April the 13th. The book of Hebrews is steeped in the rich truths that are foundational to our Catholic faith and aids us in appreciating the generosity of God through the wonders he has given us in the church. See the parish website for more details. You are invited to the last Lenten Stations of the Cross this Friday at 7 p.m. For those unable to join us for in-person masses next weekend, you are invited to participate in a drive-through pickup this Saturday from noon till one. You will receive a bag containing palms, Triduum worship aid, and other Easter prayer and devotional materials. If attending Mass in person next weekend, the materials will be available in the Commons when you arrive for Palm Sunday Mass. If you are an adult who has not received the Sacrament of Confirmation or know of an adult who has not, preparation for adults to be confirmed is beginning soon. Please contact Michelle T Tom Shack, Director of Evangelization, for more information and to sign up. Sessions begin after Easter in preparation for confirmation at Pentecost. The required registration to attend the principal liturgies of the Easter Triduum, including all Masses on Easter Sunday, will be available Monday of Holy Week. The presider at this Mass is our pastor, Monsignor Joseph Lehman, assisted by Deacon Greg Ballantyne. Please stand and greet those around you.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I came to Jesus, I looked to him, and found what I needed most. Life-giving water, the brightness of his light, and the rest that says all is well. As we begin, let us look, because we've come, let us look to him and find what we need this day. For our sins we ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not, it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand and led them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 
No longer will they need will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there also will my servant be. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will be my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and gl will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Rockefeller Center in New York City contains many large painted murals. Four murals there are by Frank Brangwen, and they have as a theme mankind's search for eternal truth through Christ's teachings. One of these murals represents Christ teaching on the mount. He is a figure in white, hands outstretched in blessing. He addresses a multitude of people of every race, class, and condition. There are the poor, the sick, the maimed, and the rich who are standing or sitting on the slopes at the base of the mountain. Some listen intently. Some are talking with companions. Some are looking away and paying no attention at all. Alongside the mural is an inscription that reads, Man's ultimate destiny depends not on whether he can learn new lessons or make new discoveries or conquests, but on his acceptance of the lesson taught him close upon 2,000 years ago. Today, I'd like to focus on two pivotal lessons from our readings. Our first reading for the fifth Sunday of Lent comes from the book of Jeremiah 31:31. It provides us with this lesson. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
that God is a covenant maker is essential, essential to biblical revelation. To enter into covenant is to accept God's will as the norm. The history of salvation is to understand it as the story of covenants between God and his people. In the Old Testament, God makes a series of covenants with his people, and in every case, covenants are sealed with a sacrifice. After the flood, God makes a covenant with Noah, proclaims his desire for human flourishing, and then to seal the covenant, Noah offers a sacrifice to the Lord. With Abraham, God forms a people. You will be my people, and you will be the way that my purposes will be carried out in the world. To seal that relationship, God directs Abraham to offer sacrifice to seal the covenant between them. When God gave the Ten Commandments, the law for governing the people inscribed on stone, Moses offered sacrifice to the Lord. In the covenant with David, God promises to make him great, create a place for the people of Israel, and rest for their, from their enemies. We hear God promise, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. And th through this Davidic line, of course, will come the Messiah. Through this covenantal relationship, comes the long centuries of temple sacrifice, ratifying the Davidic covenant. So what is a covenant? Well, it's not a contract. That is an exchange of goods and services. That is, you do this for me, and I give you some money, or I do this, and you do that. A covenant is a bond, a personal bond. It's a sharing of life, like a, a marriage contract. The message through the throughout scripture is that a covenant with God is a ratification of a relationship at the deepest level. Within all these covenants, there was the fact that the people were pledging their lives to God and God was pledging himself to them. So what was the problem? The problem was that God kept his side of the bargain, but the people of Israel did not. They don't live up to their end of the covenant, but there remains a longing in them that one day the covenant would be ratified so completely that God and his people would be reunited. That hope is expressed in Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah is prophesying during one of the most trying times in Israel's history. Through their misdeeds, Israel did not belong entirely to the Lord. Babylon and other nations are encircling Israel. Jeremiah 31, 31 tells of a day of fulfillment when the covenant would be definitively sealed, when the law would not only be written in stone, but upon the hearts of the people Israel, and their lives would reflect their covenantal promise to God. For them, it seemed to be a hope beyond hope. But now, for us, it is a prophetic statement as we leap forward about six centuries from Jeremiah the prophet to an upper room in the city of Jerusalem where a young rabbi gathers for Passover with his disciples. The rabbi, this Jesus of Nazareth, took bread, gave thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and made this extraordinary pronouncement. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We know those words well, the words of consecration. What Jeremiah dreamed of is present in Jesus. He is the new covenant poured out for us. Jesus is anticipating breaking his life open and giving himself away on the cross for us. This is the second pivotal lesson. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. 
he is exemplifying the grain of wheat that dies in order to yield much fruit. Jesus is the unity of God and humanity, pledging the fidelity of God to his people and the people pledging fidelity to God. God and his people are then connected by the deepest bonds, a sharing of life and a sharing of love. In the sacrifice of the mass, we participate in the dynamic of Christ's sacrifice that saves the world, that reconciles divinity and humanity. We are invited to receive the sacrificed Christ by which we take into ourselves exactly what his sacrifice means. Thomas Aquinas stated, stated that the Eucharist is the fulfillment of the law, that moment when the law is written on our hearts. Vatican II stated that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. The covenant becomes our flesh and our blood. When we say amen and receive the Lord, we are taking in the law of the new and everlasting covenant. That is the drama and the beauty of this covenantal language in our readings for this fifth Sunday of Lent. God is nothing but love, and therefore to have eternal life, divine life, covenantal life within you is to be conformed to that love. To have the law written on one's heart is to live out what St. John Paul II called the, the law of the gift. That is, your being increases in the measure that you give it away. The Eucharist is not a private privilege kept only for ourselves. It is meant to be something that flows through us to the world. This is why Jesus says in the gospel today, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. So what about you and me? How are we to be that grain of wheat that yields a fruitful harvest? Maybe we need to die to selfishness so that a harvest of generosity can happen. Maybe we need to die to impatience or to rash judgments so that a constructive dialogue can begin. Maybe we need to die to self-centeredness or to pride, which keeps us from forgiving and letting go of anger. Lent, a time of renewal of our covenant relationship with God, is a time to regenerate our desire to cling to the lessons that Christ teaches us, to love, forgiveness, helpfulness, mercy, and to respond to those in need. Do we see why God has blessed us with such special gifts so that we can respond? Here's the Christian paradox. Jesus ended up nailed to a cross, but that was not the end. His body, like the grain of wheat, was placed into the earth, into a tomb. And three days later, the harvest began. And over 2,000 years later, Jesus' Jesus's willingness to die to himself has produced the abundant harvest of Christian faith, which offers life eternal for all. That one man, 2,000 years ago, died to himself, and he said, I will draw everyone to myself and over a billion people follow him. The fruit of the harvest is great, and so we rejoice because we are called to be a part of that harvest. Amen. We profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was suffered to die, and descended into hell. On the 
third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence, we pray. For the church, the holy people of God, from the least to the greatest, may we know the Lord through the law of love written in the, on our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may we break down barriers that racially divide us and steadfastly work for peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers, lawyers, social workers, and others with special skills, May they use their gifts for the poor and disenfranchised, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all police officers and those serving in our military, may they perform their duties with moral integrity and dedication to protecting our community and our nation, that it may abide in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elect, who at the Easter Vigil will receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. May they experience Christ who calls them to life, unbinds them, and lets them go free. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick or injured and those facing or recovering from surgery, may they find strength in their union with Jesus, who himself was made perfect through suffering. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, Madeline Griffin, Skip Chapel, for all the dead, and in memory of Howard Johnson, David Barrows, and James Salvatore, may they who have been sown with Christ in death bear abundant harvest with Christ in eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers of the people of this parish, may they be united in the communion of the Holy Spirit with Saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus with our patron Saint Bede, and with all who stand before the throne of the Lamb, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. These are the prayers that you bring to the altar today. Father in heaven, it's so hard to love the world sometimes to love it the way that Jesus did seems impossible. Help us to be inspired by his love and guided by his example. Most of all, we want to accept that we can't do it alone and that trying is an arrogance of self-centeredness. We need you, O oh God, to give us support in this journey. Show us how to unlock our hearts so that we are less selfish. Let us be less fearful of the pain and the darkness that you will transform into Easter joy. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, will be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for as true man he wept for lazarus his friend and as eternal god raised him from the tomb just as taking pity on the human race he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast with his disciples. And as he ate with them, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. O kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until that hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Bede and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation. We shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As you profess to receive Holy Communion, we follow the guidance of the ushers. We strongly encourage choosing to receive Communion on the hand. When you receive the host, please step to the side before lifting your mask to consume the host. After returning to your pew, remain in place until the end of Mass and wait for the ushers to dismiss each section before leaving. We thank you for your patience while these precautions remain in place. for the holy ones who dwell in the land. They are noble, and in them is almighty light. But bless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and lies. It remains a single grain. But if Glory be 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ and whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Two announcements, please. Please join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. for our Lenten penance service. Several priests from our diocese will be available to hear confessions and offer the Lord's absolution. Parish offices will be closed this Thursday for a staff Lenten retreat. This is an opportunity for spiritual refreshment and renewal for our staff prior to Holy Week. Please know that all the parishioners of St. Bede will be in our prayers. Thank you. Just a reminder, um, that day the office will be closed. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.